Hey guys, I'm Dr. Aaron Horshig, and today I'm joined by elite weightlifter Darren Barnes, and we're gonna talk about how you can fix that nagging shoulder impingement pain and get back to lifting some heavy weight. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by the YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to fix shoulder pain, specifically the diagnosis so many doctors give out, shoulder impingement. Now, first off, I'm gonna say, this is something that we're actually working through right now with Darren's shoulder on his left side. So, uh, just hint for all you 55 kilo weightlifters out there, uh, Darren's on the comeback. Be on the lookout uh, coming back shortly. So let's first talk about what shoulder impingement is because literally this is a diagnosis that is given out by so many people and it's actually a very bad diagnosis. It's almost a black hole of shoulder diagnosis because there is so much that can go into a shoulder impingement and not all impingements are created equal. Here's what I mean. If we look at your shoulder anatomy, here's just our simple shoulder model. We got your shoulder blade on the back, your humerus is your arm bone, and the shoulder blade connects to the humerus like a golf ball sits on a golf tee. Now, like I said, not all shoulder impingements are created equal because there's many different types. There is an external shoulder impingement, which means that things and structures on the front side of the joint are smashing together. There's an internal impingement, which means that structures on the back side of the shoulder are smashing together. There is a primary, which basically describes how this little notch, bony notch on the front side of the shoulder, may be for some people more hooked shaped than others, which leads to an increased susceptibility for pinching of structures. And then there's a, so that's primary, secondary impingement, which could mean a number of things. The big thing I want you guys to take away in when dealing with shoulder impingement is that the screening process is imperative to understanding what is going on and how you should go about fixing because there is no one size fix all to fixing a shoulder impingement. So if you literally Google how to fix shoulder impingement and this video doesn't show up, likely you may not be getting the best information because there is no one size fits all. It has to be found with the correct why. You have to illuminate your cause. That's what I'm gonna show you today. So first things first, when you have a secondary impingement, remember primary, there's that increase in bony overgrowth right there. That's something we can't fix short of surgery. Most people are gonna have those issues because of a secondary impingement, meaning that there is an issue in either mobility, stability, or coordination at the shoulder joint and the way it's moving that is leading to the pinching of certain structures and eventual pain. So what I'm gonna show you is my step-by-step -step process that you can use to uncover what the cause is for your shoulder. Now, first things first, we are going to look at mobility. Now, I'm gonna have Darren lay on his back and head down on this side. Most of the time when people are dealing with a shoulder impingement, they're gonna have pain as they uh, as the arm goes overhead. So I may be able to bring him up here and out. That hurts right there. He's unable to bring his arm completely overhead without a pinching pain on the front side of the shoulder. One of the reasons for that could be stiff lat muscles. And remember, these run right up here. These are the big V-shaped muscles and they attach onto the humerus. Now, your lat muscles do internal rotation. They keep the shoulder internally rotated. So if they are stiff or tight, they're going to internally rotate the shoulder, which is gonna to lead to a smaller joint space for when you're overhead. So what we're gonna do is show you a way that you can screen for shoulder lat restrictions. So first things first, we're gonna put the arm into internal rotation. We're gonna turn the thumb down. Take your hand and sort of secure the shoulder blade so we don't get any cheating out of that. We're gonna bring that arm as high as we can overhead. So you can see right here, I'm about at the front side of his ear, okay? I don't want that shoulder blade to come up, so keep it nice and secure right there, okay? About shoulder, or right at about the height of his ear. What I'm gonna do next is do the same thing, but I'm gonna twist his arm out. So we're externally rotating, placing a stretch on the lat muscles. We're gonna secure the shoulder blade again, and bring it overhead. Now, for people who have stiff lats as a contributing factor to their impingement, remember keeping them into internal rotation, right there, they're not gonna get nearly as far overhead with the thumb turned out. So they will get to about there. That means that one of the weak links in creating that impingement is a stiffness or a limiting flexibility factor of those lat muscles. Now for Darren, you can see he's got pretty good motion. So lat stiffness was not one of his limiting factors, but you can see right here, if someone did have that, here's what we're gonna do. So first things first, mobility test, we need to do a test retest. Here's how you would clear that up. First things first, jump on up. What you can do is grab a ring. This can be a band that's maybe held up high. Let's say we're gonna stretch out his left side. 
You're gonna take that hand, place it under like that. So left hand under. So we're externally rotating, placing a stretch on the lat. And then you're gonna put this hand on top to keep it there. Okay, and you're just gonna lean back, chest forward. Now from right here, this lat spans all the way down to the pelvis region and it attaches up here. So we're externally rotating. We're getting a really good stretch on this. Now if you come and view from this side, if you're doing this correctly, you're gonna get a good stretch in that lateral armpit region. Now, this should not recreate that pinching impingement pain. If it does, it's just not right yet for your body at fixing that flexibility issue. So let's come back up. If you were programming that, maybe three to five reps, five deep breaths in and out. But drop that, what we're gonna do is something else to improve flexibility of the lats without pushing into that harmful pinching sensation. Darren's gonna come over here and do this for a second. You're basically gonna pin this ball where those lats run all the way up on that outside part of the armpit and roll in and out like this and then roll up. So let's try that. I want you to get a feel for what that is gonna feel like. Very good. So you're gonna roll in and out and your goal is to find spots deep within that muscle where it's gonna come up and attach. And I'm telling you, if you have some stiff lats, you're gonna find some restrictions. This is not gonna to be too much fun. Go into the pain cave a little bit, it shouldn't hurt too bad. But from right there, you can then flex that arm over the top. So we're getting a little bit of uh, flexibility work as well, sort of that pin and then tack and stretch. Very good, something like this. You're maybe gonna do one to two minutes then jump on up. So soft tissue mobilization has been shown to enhance uh, flexibility of the muscles right afterwards. This could be very helpful for then us doing some movement work over the top. So again, you would always test, retest to make sure that what we're doing is efficient and effective at clearing up the restrictions that we're trying to treat. So again, you'd get back here, turn that thumb up, yes or no, did we get more range of motion with less pinching in the front side of the shoulder? Clearly that was not one of Darren's issues, so we can move on past that. So like I said, mobility restrictions, that's step one. What else can cause an impingement? You can have a stability issue. So the muscles in the back side of the shoulder are not doing their job at keeping the shoulder blade pulled back and in a good position. So let's roll over on your stomach. I'm gonna show a little anatomy for this. Whenever we're looking at the back side of the shoulder, again, this would be the right side. There's a number of muscles that attach onto the shoulder blade. You have your mid trap, your rhomboids, your low trap that spans this way. And then you have some of your rotator cuff muscles that sit on the back side of the shoulder and actually attach to the humerus. Now their job, whenever we're doing exercise, is to keep the golf ball centered on the golf tee right there. If there is an imbalance where the muscles on the front side of your shoulder, like the pecs, your anterior deltoids, are overly strong and over facilitated compared to the muscles that lay on your back side, which is a very common muscle imbalance we see with weightlifters or powerlifters, you're gonna get sort of that anterior sitting of the shoulder joint. So the golf ball is gonna roll more so towards the front side of the joint as you're doing different motions, especially when you're pushing anything over your head. So one of your goals first should be to test to see whether or not those muscles are weak or not. So let's do his left side. So Darren, out to the side like a T. So in this position right here, we're going to strength, or we're going to test the strength of the mid trap and the rhomboids. He's gonna hold out like that. Don't let me push down. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and relax. You can see that was a little tough for him. If you are dealing with uh, an impingement, I want you to make sure that you are testing right and left sides to see if there's a big difference side to side. Um, but again, you're pushing and you're holding for a few seconds. Don't just do a quick push. We wanna see whether or not those muscles can turn on and whether they can remain in tension for a couple seconds, okay? Then we're gonna go up at a Y. So we're gonna look more so at those low trap muscles in this position because of their pull. They're more so gonna be pulled and called into uh, maintain stability. So hold. Hold, hold, and what we're doing in this position is not only looking for whether or not he can hold his arm up, but also if he's compensating. You'll see some athletes that their shoulder will literally shift all the way up. They're gonna shrug to try to call in that upper trap to maintain stability of that shoulder. So look for those compensations. We want that shoulder ideally to remain nice and stiff and tight in this position. Now, here's the deal. Let's say you came out to the side and you could just push down and boop, that arm just drops down. They have no strength in the back side of that shoulder. Your first step is gonna be doing a horizontal abduction, which plain and simple, we're gonna do a single arm lateral raise while laying on your stomach. So he's gonna grab a weight. You can do this with anything light. I promise you, I've had some big guys that can bench over 600 pounds 
start off with one pound on this exercise. So what we're gonna do is go straight out to the side, but it's all about how you're performing this exercise that makes all the difference. Most people, they're just gonna relax the shoulder blade and just try to move their arm out to the side. Now, that's gonna keep that shoulder in a very forward or anterior dominant position right there. As you go out to the side, you're probably gonna feel that shoulder working very hard on the front side or maybe even creating that impingement. So what we're gonna do is start by setting the shoulder blade. So he's gonna pull back and in, keep that elbow straight. So you're gonna retract, don't turn on that upper trap, and then go out to the side. In that position, we are calling upon the mid, the low trap, the rhomboids, to pull the shoulder into a good position, prime those muscles to do their job while then the arm is moving. So we're moving in a more optimally position that's gonna keep the shoulder joint in a good, nice and safe place. So back down, something like this. I start off my programming two sets of 10 for a five second hold. The hold is key because we're not just working strength, because remember, strength is your ability to produce force. Stability is your ability to limit excessive or unwanted motion. So I want him to come up, squeeze by pulling the shoulder blade in, holding up here. We're not overly dominant with that upper trap, so make sure they're not shrugging in this position. Five second hold, and then back down. Something like this, you're gonna do two sets of 10, and then we'll go on to our next exercise. Now let's drop that down and stand up. Another thing that's very important to look at when we're dealing with shoulder impingements is your external rotation strength and stability. Now, oftentimes we test for that down by the side. So we hold here, we push the hands in, we say resist, hold, hold, hold. Now for a lot of athletes, specifically my weightlifters, powerlifters, crossfitters, if you're a good athlete, that's gonna be nice and strong. But that's not where you feel your shoulder impingement down here, right? You feel it when you're going above your head. So you need to also make sure that you're testing external rotation in an elevated position. So you would bring their arm up and say, hold right here, don't let me push down, hold it. And again, let's say this is his pain-free side, nice and strong, but then we go over to the other side and we say right here, elevated position, hold, nice and strong. And what you'll see is some compensations. They won't be able to hold as strong. They'll maybe get that upper trap, will shrug a little bit, showing us that their reason for developing that impingement, things smashing together, is because we have a deficit in creating that external rotation torque, strength and stability when in an elevated position. So how do we fix that? What we're gonna do is an external rotation exercise in a tall kneeling or half kneeling position. So I'm gonna have you kneel down right here and let's do this with your right arm so we can show everyone. Okay, so from right here, what you're gonna do is start off by getting a little retraction. So you're gonna pull your shoulder blade back, okay? He's then going to row to 90 degrees. Now in this position right here, we just locked in the back side of the shoulder blade, priming those muscles to create that stability. Trap is not overly dominant on the upside. And then you're gonna externally rotate, pull that shoulder blade, good, arm back. Again, hold in that position, five, four, three, two, one. Bring it down, very good, and then punch straight forward. So again, let's do that one more time. So it all starts here, bring that shoulder blade back, good, elbow back. From there, externally rotate. Keep this tensioned on nice and strong. Very good. And then down, keep this tight, keep this tight, and then punch forward. Okay, so that is the external rotation exercise. You could even add in a press at the very end if you wanted to down the road. But that is a start for how you can diagnose and then fix impingement because there's no one size fits all. Could be a mobility issue, could be a stability issue or a coordination issue. You have to understand the why behind the diagnosis so you can really make sure that your first step is leading you towards optimal recovery. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If this was at all helpful for you, you felt like the value was there in the content, please subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Like, share it with your friends and family. If there's any questions you have on the video, let me know in the comment section below. And if there's anything else you'd like to learn about as far as injury or performance goes in future videos, let me know as well. Until next week, guys, happy squatting. They say that. Energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching? So caught up in their egos, these people have lost.